Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add a toggle search box that appears when a user clicks it. So let me give you a quick demo. If you click this search icon, what I wanted to do is have it where it automatically is going to appear right here so the user can type something in to go to the search page and then if they want to close it, they can click it back or they could just click anywhere else in the website. And then I also have some code where if they click within here, it's not going to disappear. So this is all going to be using just a little bit of a JavaScript and CSS to pull this off. So now I'm going to jump into the page and show you how easy it is to set up. And here we are on the back end of this header template right here. So if I go back into the demo real quick, when I click on the search icon, it's actually all being displayed all within the header template. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. But if you want, you don't have to always use this inside of a header. You can use it anywhere on your website. But in this case, I just wanted to show when you have a little search icon next to a menu, have that pop up. We've had this request quite a bit lately from clients, so I wanted to make this video. So the first thing is go ahead and you have to assign this to something. So in this case, you can see right here, I just have like a search icon. So nothing fancy here. This is just using the icon widget inside of Elementor. And I'm just gonna give it the search icon. And then you need to put this in right here for the link. You need to have it where when the user clicks it, it's actually going to hover and change to the uh, like the pointer finger. So you need to just have the hashtag in here. Now what we can do is go ahead underneath it and add the search container. So in this case, I'm just going to hit plus here and I'm going to keep this very simple. And there's a lot of different search widgets out there. I have like crockle block ones. This is just using the Elementor one. So if you just have the Elementor one, this is all going to work just as good. So I wanted to get rid of this button right here. So you can just go right here and submit is enter key. So now the user is going to type in and then they have to hit enter and then it will go to your search like archive page. And then let's go ahead and give this container like a different color background. So at least it kind of stands out. So I'll put this like light gray. And so far this is looking pretty good, but this is where you can go ahead and add more padding or margins or make it skinnier, wherever you want to do. Then what we need to do is go ahead and type in HTML. And what I like to do is just throw it underneath um, your search widget you just created. And then you're just gonna paste in the code. I'm gonna leave the code in the description below for the CSS and for this JavaScript. So you're just gonna paste this code in right here. And let me just expand this a little bit. And I won't go over all the code in detail, but the main thing that you need to be concerned is that there's two different CSS IDs that need to be tied to something. So the search icon up here needs a CSS ID. Uh, I'm just calling it search right here. And then this whole container, I'm going to call this just search box. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So the main container, I'm calling it search box and the icon is just search. So I'm click on the main container. CSS ID is just going to be called search box. And then the, con the widget up here itself is just called search. And you want to make sure you put it in ID, not under classes, because then it's not going to work. And then when you do that, nothing's going to happen. Now what we need to do is add some CSS to this. And then we want to make sure that it's hidden by default. And then it's going to be displayed when a user clicks on that icon. And I like to place the CSS right up here within the page setting. So you can click where it says header settings. So this is going to throw the CSS you know, just all within the template. Cause I usually don't like to add CSS like this to the containers or anything like that. Cause I like to have it all in one little place. And then you're just gonna uh, paste this in here, push that code down. And as you can see, we are targeting the search box right here. And when you put that code in, as long as you still call it search box, it should just disappear by default. So that's what's happening right here. You could see that it's hidden by default and then it's gonna add this class called visible and then it's gonna toggle it back on. And then that's it. So now when you hit publish and you go to the front end of the website, I'm going to hit refresh right here. And when you do this, you're going to see it works correctly right here. So if I just type in like the word test, hit enter, it's going to go to my search archive page. And then what's cool about this is if you put it in the header, it's going to add it to all of your pages, of course. And let me go back into where we just were. And one thing I noticed is if you throw that HTML widget in here, you see this uh, inconsistent gap where it's a little more narrow up here. So let me go ahead and actually remove that CSS code and show you how to fix that. So I'm gonna take this code out right here. And then this is the main container, that hidden container. So what you could do is go underneath your layout and where you see columns and gaps, you could just hit zero. So this is gonna automatically remove this 
since it's not really getting rendered in the front end, it's just back end code, it still was like being displayed in Elementor. So what this is gonna do is kind of force that to you know not have any gaps or anything like that. So now if I go back into here and add the CSS code back, I'll just paste that in here, hit publish. And then if I go to the front end of the website, hit update, you're gonna notice that that gap is now consistent. So now I can you know, add a CSS padding or whatever I need to this search box and then it will actually get displayed correctly. And then one last thing is if you want this animation to come in slower, you can easily just change that with the CSS we uh, have right here. So as you can see, it's taking 320, sec uh, 320 milliseconds to, to kind of complete this animation. So if you want to go ahead and just make this, you know, let's go a lot slower so we can see if you just type in one S, so one second instead, hit publish. And now when I hit refresh, when I click this, it should take one second to kind of complete. You can see right here, one second to complete, and then boom, it will go away. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial on how I was able to pull off this search function right here, all with just using some JavaScript and CSS. Thanks for watching again. This is Mark from Wiki Design.